Throughout the Second World War, there were huge networks of concentration camps established in many different lands, occupied by the Nazis and the German army. The largest site was Auschwitz, where over a million prisoners were killed within the barbed wire fences, and there were many more sites such as Dachau, Bergen-Belsen and Mauthausen. But there was one fort which was constructed before the First World War in Belgium that was used by the SS following the Belgium surrender on the 28th of May 1940, and it was used as a horrific prison camp for resistance members and other prisoners. Inside here the conditions were terrible, and some of the treatment of prisoners was brutal torture. Fort Breendonk was the forgotten SS torture camp of the Second World War, but what is its story? Join us today as we find out, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Originally built by the Belgian army between 1906 and 1913, as part of a second ring of defences of the National Redoubt, protecting Antwerp, Fort Breendonk was considered an important part of the nation's defences. It was used following the German invasion of Belgium in World War I, and came under fire from German howitzers in October 1914. The fort's garrison did surrender to the Germans, and it was briefly used during the Second World War, but was considered to have been out of military use. As the Second World War broke out, it was clear that Hitler would target Belgium once again, and during the German invasion of the land, it served as the headquarters of the Belgian General Staff under King Leopold III, but as the Germans advanced and went forward towards the fort, it was abandoned. But then the Belgian army surrendered, and the fort then became a feared German prison camp, known as Brindonk I. It was occupied in May 1940, and then became a prison camp controlled by the SS and also the SD, who operated in Belgium. Certain alterations were made, but the first prisoners came to the fort on the 20th of September 1940. To begin with, they were mostly petty criminals, or those who did not abide by the German race laws. As the war continued, resistance fighters, political prisoners and other hostages were held at Fort Breendonk, and many Jews held there were later sent to Auschwitz, where they were killed. The camp was guarded by collaborators to begin with, and also German SS units, and inside the camp 300 prisoners died. Around 185 were executed, and many of them died from torture, exposure and starvation and disease. Despite this number being much lower than camps such as Auschwitz or Bergen-Belsen, the prisoners of Breendonk were still unlawfully murdered and killed. Around 3,600 prisoners were held in Breendonk, and the camp's rules and daily life was very tough. When new inmates came to the camp, they were brought to the courtyard where they had to stand facing a wall before they were processed. They were forced not to move, and if they did they would be whipped and beaten severely. The punishment of the camp consisted of regular beatings, and also torture was administered inside the gunpowder magazine, and also execution occurred by hanging or firing squad. The inmates were forced to watch any execution that took place, to instil fear into their hearts. Also the camp's commandant, Philip Schmidt, also set his dog onto prisoners regularly, which would bite and maul them. His wife would also wander around the fort, ordering guards to whip and beat inmates, and she would also shout obscenities at them. But one element of the torture was that severe and needless beatings occurred daily, and also following the German defeat at Stalingrad, they were inflicted seemingly on prisoners much worse, and many SS guards forced prisoners to stand in the cold water of the moat in the winter. Some of the victims sank into the mud in the moat, and some struggled and drowned in the moat, but all prisoners were forced to work, and this centred around shifting soil to make sure that the camp was protected by a huge high bank to hide it from the outside. Prisoners were given hand tools to do this, and the ground was harsh and the soil very boggy, causing carts of mud to sink, and the work was very tough and a day was usually 12 hours long, and prisoners worked 7 days a week. If they did not respond to the guards quickly, then they were beaten. Prisoners were housed in the old barracks, which were built from stone and were very poorly ventilated. They were very cold and damp, and disease spread rather quickly in them. Rooms were also overcrowded, and prisoners only had a small single bucket per room for the toilet in the night. Many of the sick and weak inmates just let their waist drop down onto the bunks below, which caused tension in the bunks. The guards wanted this, and prisoners were allowed to use the toilet twice a day. Jewish prisoners were segregated and housed in wooden barracks, which were very overcrowded and cold, and other prisoners were housed in small groups. Food was very rationed, and the Jews had the least food and water, and the meals were not enough to sustain a human being, who was forced to work incredibly hard in the heat or cold, 
and also partake in physical activity. But the harsh treatment of prisoners was known outside of the fort, but the SS continued to make things incredibly terrible. As the war continued, there was less chance that a prisoner would have to survive, as many were deported to different camps. With regards to the torture that occurred inside of Fort Brindonk, many were subject to beatings, and also other punishments such as the manacles, and people were shackled in strange ways in chains that would dig into their bodies. The torture room at Brindonk Fortress still has a number of devices inside, which were used by the SS. A prisoner would be forced into isolation before their torture, and the room they were held in was just big enough, so they could stand upright, they would not be able to sit down, similar to how an oubliette functioned and worked. The walls in this room were chalked white, and if a prisoner slumped onto the walls or leaned on it, and they had chalk on their clothes, then they would be beaten very severely. The expectation was that they had to stay upright, and this could go on for days and even weeks, with prisoners being held in standing cells like at Dachau and Auschwitz. If prisoners did not give adequate information to their interrogators, the torture would ramp up. Prisoners would have their hands bound behind their backs, and were attached to a meat hook, which was then used to hoist the prisoner up into the air. This would cause shoulders to dislocate and muscles to tear and rip, and at the same time being suspended in the air, SS guards would beat prisoners with pipes and other weapons. After a while, the pulley system was released, and prisoners would fall onto a wooden wedge below, which would cause injuries to the body. This continued and continued until the interrogators believed they had sufficient information. There was also a gutter inside of the torture chamber, and this was used to drain any blood and urine that the prisoner would leak as they would lose control after they were being tortured. Other torture methods included using thumb screws and head clamps, and prisoners were often burned with red-hot pokers and cigarettes, and they were also electrocuted. The conditions at the camp were very cruel, and the torture room became infamous to people outside for its brutality. Many prisoners were sent from the fort to other camps as the war turned, and they were then killed inside of these. On the 4th of September 1944, the SS evacuated the fort, and all the remaining prisoners were sent to Buchenwald, and less than 10% of Breendonk's prison population actually survived the war, such was the cruelty, and the state they were in as they left the fort. Many of the survivors were haunted to the day they died because of the nightmares inflicted at Breendonk. The camp was liberated in late 1944, and it was then used as an internment camp for collaborators, and was overseen by the British. Following the war, there were war crimes trials held involving guards and workers at Fort Breendonk, and 18 death sentences were given out. A few were changed to prison sentences, and the Nazi camp commandant, Philip Schmidt, was sentenced to death. He never showed any remorse for his crimes and atrocities inside of the fort. Today, Fort Breendonk is a forgotten part of the concentration camp system, and although it held roughly 3,000 prisoners, it was one of the most brutal and barbaric camps and forts used by the Nazis and the SS. The guards inflicted such terror and horror onto prisoners, and they also used torture to a barbaric degree, where some prisoners were killed by their ordeals. Fort Brindonk was a horrific place of execution also, and many people suffered here during the conflict, and although technically a prison rather than a concentration camp, it became a site of the horrific conditions where prisoners were treated awfully. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.